What's up guys, LH Low Tech. I'm gonna be doing a quick unboxing uh, of the Anycubic i3 Mega with Ultra Base. This is a i3 clone by Anycubic. It is made of metal. It is, you know, one of the better reviewed models that are available. Uh, this was, we got this one from Amazon um, on a lightning deal and decided to take it apart, see what's what. I have seen a number of these unboxings from the ones coming from Gearbest and places like that, but this is from Amazon. So see if this is any different. Um, if anything, if it's broken, I get to ship it back for free. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. One thing I do like already, and, and I'm not sure how this compares to the other ones, but uh, the, it is a, a foam insert as opposed to uh, like a styrofoam so it doesn't like break apart into pieces and whatever I can bend it and it's not going to break it's always a good sign when they spring for the not crumbly type here is the manual any cubic i3 mega and it is actually in color so that's great they did put some effort into it English seems okay, although it is a little bit in <laughs> older style English with some uh, therefores and stuff in there. So maybe not written like they would write a traditional English manual, but it is at least completely intelligible, which is great. Put that off to the side. This is the pieces to, well, it has a spare extruder in here, as well as this looks like the filament holder, which it looks like it would be wood, but it's actually clear like acrylic inside. So it's actually pretty nice. That's cool. This is the spare extruder it comes with. Uh, I'm not sure why they include another one, but it's cool that they do. So in case you do need another extruder down the road when your one yours fails, it's great. All the tools you will need for day-to-day -day operation, as well as an extra Z limit switch, which is actually great because I had the Z limit switch fail on my uh, Monoprice Select Mini V2, and I had to buy new ones. This one comes with one for free, so great. USB A to B. Uh, spatula. It's actually a nice metal spatula. Uh, I have a better one already, but hey, it comes with it. SD card. Uh, and I can't see what size it is. Huh, it's a micro SD card adapter. And uh, a completely blank micro SD card inside. So. I'm gonna guess two gigs, but it's possible that it's bigger. Uh, two adapters, just one card though. This is a SD card USB reader. So this is, I'm gonna guess, more pieces for the spool holder, screws, and what is this? Oh, this would probably be the, the piece where the spool holder actually hangs on, the spool actually, you know, rests on. So, yeah. They probably didn't even need to spend money on the caps to do that, but they did, so. Cool, you could probably print your own caps if you wanted to. Power cable, standard, three prong, which is great. It means getting a new cable is very easy. Because any place like Fry's or Best Buy, Radio Shack, if they're still around near you, will have them. That was fairly substantial. Here is base. Spool, one kilogram of black filament unlabeled but it does include filament which is a lot better than most printers that come with the, the little tiny you know enough to print the sample print and that's about it 
Um, I don't know if there's actually anything, but I think it's just cardboard. If I find I'm missing something, I'll open this, but it looks like it's just cardboard braced to give us some rigidity, some space between here, which is always good. And this is the extruding arm and the top of the whole thing. It is, the, these bars all, are all greased, so you might get some grease on your hands. And the grease is not necessarily even, but as soon as you start using it, the motors will spread that out. But that looks like what's all in the box, so let's get rid of the box. All right, so this is everything that came inside of the box. Uh, the printer itself is in two pieces. It shouldn't be that tough to put it all together. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and start. I will say seeing this, everything this thing comes with as opposed to, no. also this, everything this thing comes with as opposed to something like the mono price, where it did come with um, the the bare essentials to get started. It came with a plastic spatula, which was useless. It was garbage. I mean, really should have printed something <laughs> much better. Um, the power cable was proprietary. You needed a brick. Um, I don't remember if it came with a USB cable or not. The other one. But it definitely didn't come with tools and wire cutters and stuff like that and the spare Z switch. Um, it did come with a micro SD card, but it didn't come with, um, you know, the spare adapter or whatever. It didn't come really with a spool holder. It did have the, the little unattached one, but it wasn't that great. Um, and it definitely didn't come with a spare extruder. So as a starting kit, like as somebody's first 3D printer, this would definitely have everything you needed for a while. I mean, especially with a, a full kilo of, of filament, you could print for, at least, I mean, at least probably a couple of weeks until you could order some more filament on online. You wouldn't necessarily need to buy anything else. This would be a great gift for somebody as their first 3D printer. And you don't have to worry about, oh, do they need this? Do they need this? Do they need to do this? It's everything. So that's awesome. Let's put it all together and see how she does. Read the manual. Greased rods is why they provided you with gloves. That's interesting. Okay. Or you could just not touch the greased rods or be okay with getting grease in your hands. I don't know. Hopefully if you're building a kit, you're okay with getting grease in your hands. I can see having two people would be beneficial here since you need to have this thing standing up in order to get this here, but eh, I did it, so this is not too hard. Can I say that's too many Allen wrenches? It comes with four. Gosh, I got grease on my fingers. I wish I was wearing gloves. After the first screw, this is actually really easy to put together. As far as I know, there's only eight screws needed, but they did supply nine, so I guess that's the whole, everything you need, and a backup. Filament sensor, 
magnetically held on here. Red cable is hiding underneath. Ugh. Hopefully that's in focus. All the ports and stuff are on this side. Power supply, on off switch. And this is a switch here for the voltage. It does come defaulted to 220. Uh, and then the switch here to go to 110. I do kind of find it somewhat comical that the inside switch doesn't say 220 and 110. It says 230 and, one, and, 230 and 115. Um, but whatever. Other side here, USB port, full size SD card. It's kind of funny that they would include a micro SD card and an adapter when it accepts a full size card and the unit uses a full size card. There we go. One thing I am noticing, and it's something that I noticed on <laughs> what we can issue on my monoprice, is that this cable here, it looks like it's going to bend a lot. And I've seen that this is an issue with other people, that this power cable eventually breaks due to all the bending. Um, so it'll be something I want to address sometime soon before it breaks. Uh, normally the, the heater doesn't break, it's the, the sensor that breaks, it's a thinner cable, but either way... I want to take a take a look at that and bring something else there. Um, one other thing, there is a zip tie visible from the outside right here on the edge. Not sure why, but it's there. All set up, all calibrated, everything's ready to go. I am using my own set of filament because I had some black I wanted to use anyway. That way I feel a little bit more of a one-to-one -one comparison anyways. Um, first impressions of the machine before it's even printed. Not a huge fan of the design here. Uh, I know a lot of people actually have either removed this or printed something new to cover it. Um, that might be something I do just because I don't necessarily care about having a Gundam or a Transformer or whatever you want to call this thing. Um, I have noticed that the fans on this machine are a lot louder than the fans from my Monoprice, although it is a much bigger machine, so it needs a lot more cooling. So that is something to be aware of here. Um, I've also heard a fair number of beeps that have not been as a result of me touching anything, so I'll let you know if that continues. Um, but leveling this thing was dead simple. You just turn little knobs as opposed to needing to get an Allen wrench out and and do it. But um, I got, it was on my Monoprice, so that part is definitely much simpler. Um, loading filament into this thing is much easier. Once it got in, I did have some a little bit of trouble getting it just lined up in the beginning. Um, but since then, it has worked fine. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead. It wants us to print owls. And it should be all set to go. I guess it's just getting the bed temperatures up to snuff. I had everything preheated, but Apparently the preheat is not quite enough. It looks like it was preheated to 50 degrees and it wants to go to 60. Um, but that should be no problem at all. Completely stock, haven't done anything to it yet. Uh, and we want to see how, how loud it really gets. Um, hopefully the fan noise is coming through. It does sound like you are running like a, like a PC. So I'm actually going to let this run and then I'll come back and share how it looks at the end. Uh, it doesn't have an estimated time or anything on here. It does have a, per a percentage bar. It still says 0%. It does count the elapsed time, which is nice, uh, but the, the time <laughs> remaining, it does not actually know. Uh, I'm not sure if that's because it doesn't read ahead or if it just doesn't share that information. Um, but for the most part, the screen has enough information onto it. It's not necessarily something I would say is a beautiful looking screen. It doesn't look necessarily very professional, uh, but at least it does have all the information that you want in there. All right, well, let this go. See how it looks at the end.
everything's printed. The bed's still warm. Let's see how easy it is to take off. Still pretty attached. So the thing with Ultra Base is that when the bed cools, it should in theory release this very easily. So this is still hot. It doesn't want to let go. So let it go for a few minutes, see if it cools down, see how easy it is to get off. In theory, you shouldn't ever really need the spatula. All right, so the bed is cool. And there we go. <laughs> I, it required no effort at all to take that off. They look pretty good. A little bit of stringing, but this was not the PLA that it wanted me to use in the beginning anyway. Um, but yeah, for the most part, these look really nice. The bottom does have a little bit of like a checkerboard to it, but really, it all looks great. Yeah, for a first print, it's, 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 yeah, it worked really well. Nothing to really complain about. Everything that was in the box was used pretty much. Again, you saw how easily that came off. I don't know why they bothered to include that. Maybe if you do decide to take off the, the Ultra Base, then that might be something useful. But yeah, for the first print, couldn't have gone pretty much any better. Thanks for watching guys, this is LH Low Tech, and this has been a quick unboxing, build, and first print of the Anycubic i3 Mega. Subscribe.